Man, oh man. Hello, friends out there in YouTube land. Robert Ham here with Robert Ham Photography. Today, I got in something very special. This was the Mint TL70. And this has actually been probably my first 12 hours with the camera. I wanted to tell you what I thought about it. My first, very first 12 hours. And in those 12 hours, I've shot 30 images, three packs of film, and got some really great results. Now, interesting to know, there is a couple of things about the camera. I'm going to give you a top five, and I got one awesome bonus. But you're going to get to see all of my images. Each pack, I'm going to do a very informal scroll through my images so that you'll get to see. I take lots of notes on these things, and uh, that'll help you be able to develop your TL70 photography in the future. So I look forward to that video series coming out. You should start to see those videos dropping in the future. Just so you know, my very first roll was a bomb roll, man, and it was a roll that could very easily have discouraged someone if they didn't realize what was going on. However, my second roll, or cartridge, I should say, and my third cartridge, bang on. They were awesome. So this is a camera that's got some particularities about it, but I think you're going to find out in this top five, it's going to surprise you quite a bit. Let's go ahead. In no particular order, learning curve. That's, that's number one, man. This camera has a learning curve. So if you're used to the Instax cameras, Fuji makes it so simple to point and shoot and get a great image. Most of the time, people's complaint with an Instax camera is more to do with focus than exposure because of the zone focusing. This, nah, focus is great. We're going to talk about that with the viewfinder in a minute. But the biggest issue that you're going to have here is that you get too much light coming in. So there's a learning curve. You have to learn how to use uh, this camera with the ISO 800 film. And I would say my initial impressions are don't trust the green ready lamp, okay? Because it tells you it's ready in a lot of ways. That's another thing, but I'm still working out <laughs> how I figure it's doing its matrix metering. Until then, I'm continuing with the Sunny 16 as best as I can and using my exposure compensation plus one or minus one. That means that if you can't always trust the light that you see that tells you if you've got a good exposure, um, then you really have to be on your P's and Q's when using this a little bit more. Other than that, let's move on to number two. Take it for what it is. These are, this is my right off the presses. I mean, it's my first 12 hours with the camera. This is how I feel about it. I think that this camera needs an ND filter out of the box. Okay. Now, Mint Camera makes some ND filters for this, and that's great. I think that's a great collection. The issue is for Mint, for new photographers that want to buy a high-end precision machined piece of equipment, which this is, okay, if they can't push the button and get an excellent or a really good image their very first try, then that's going to be kind of rough. And most of the time, people are going to take a picture using this camera outdoors as their first image. So whether or not you tell them to put it on F22 or whatever, um, they may or may not do that. One thing that will make it better is if it had an ND filter that it came with in the box, then you would be able to very easily use that wider aperture. If you had a three-stop ND filter built into the box, then even if they put it on F5.6 outdoors in the bright sunlight, sunny 16, you'd be able to get a great exposed image. Otherwise, you got to stop it down to aperture like F22, and there is some vignetting with F22 on this device. That's a by nature of its design. You can get rid of all that vignetting with an aperture or with an ND filter. Now, okay, that's all I'm gonna say about that right there. I think that it could come with an ND filter or a wheel that allows you to control the shutter speeds. We're getting into much more manual stuff, which is kind of technical, but I really did think out of the box an ND filter would have been nice. Continuing on, bonus. Oh my goodness, when the sun went down, this camera the low light capability is amazing. Number three is low light. When the sun went down, this camera shined bright as the moon, man. And it was beautiful. I was taking pictures at the beach at 11 o'clock at nighttime of my kids on the pier. And I was getting beautiful reflections in the water and properly illuminated kiddos because of the flash. And I was just getting images that I could never have gotten with any other Instax camera that I have used. Now, there is, you may be able to use the Magellan. I don't have the Magellan glass pilomography, but I can tell you it does not have the same capabilities as this does when it compares to 
the um, the one five hundredth of a second. The Magellan doesn't. It goes to one two fiftieth. So maybe that doesn't matter. Maybe I'm talking out of maybe maybe. Let's just get back to the point. Who cares about the Magellan? What I'm saying is, any camera that I have used so far, that's Instax, this camera whoops hands down in low light. In fact, complete darkness. I got great shots. You have got to see my uh, my cassette three video. It'll be out here shortly. Uh, low light, awesome. And people, man, at the beach, at the carnival, I'm taking pictures of my kids. People are seeing these things go off, and they're seeing. I'm getting better images than their grainy images on their cell phones. Ha! Mint camera, you knocked it out of the park with that lens right there. The big, bright, beautiful viewfinder. Oh my lord. This viewfinder, even at nighttime, even indoors, it is big, it is bright, it is beautiful. I don't know what you can see. I've got video footage of it for you, but I can only tell you that even outdoors, framing at nighttime, at nighttime, on the city street, was easy. Now the strip is brighter than most, but even framing my kids underneath the pier to get the shots with the reflections in the water, that was easy as well. I could do it. It was not a difficult task. Here's where it is difficult. If you try to take a landscape portrait, this is rough because it's reversed and now it's, it's just crazy. But with a little bit of tinkering, you can do it. Number five, moving into number five. This list is going quick. Oh man. Yeah, save the best for last, right? The lens itself. This is a three-element, aspherical glass lens that Mint has used in this. Oh, Mint, they, they did their job, guys. It is a beautiful, warm piece of glass that has very smooth contrast and a relatively moderate saturation curve. I love this lens. In fact, even in situations in shade outdoors during the daytime where you would normally have blue highlights or blue shadow tones come through, Warmth is still retained in skin tones. That's very great. I have noticed that great from the get-go. Even the very first roll, which bombed, still reproduced warm skin tones, warm colors, and a smooth contrast curve. And I like that. Mint nailed this down. Oh, man. Glowing review. Not exactly. We had a couple of minuses at the first place. Now we got a couple of pluses, so it's okay. And... Oh, here's the bonus. It's going to go one of two ways, right? The camera is very powerful, but very sensitive. you got a devil on one side, an angel on the other. Which way are you going to go? So because the camera leaves so much creative control to you, and I'm used to shooting film. I'm used to shooting manual. But the issue is Instax, the film itself, is a very high-speed film for such a wide aperture. Remember, this Instax is medium format. So it's larger than 35 millimeter. It's smaller than 120. It's right in the range there, but it's technically it's medium format. And so these images themselves are very sensitive. And Instax has a very narrow exposure latitude, maybe only 10 stops. Most scenes will meter out it with the Sunny 16 up to 17 stops or 17 exposure values. That's most of the time what you're going to get out on the Sunny 16 rule. So you're either going to crush the shadows or you're going to blow out the highlights when shooting in stacks, unless you really, really handle it. And there's a way to balance it. But when you add a gigantic lens on the front of it without a neutral density filter or a way to gate the light in the shutter, you're calling problems to come to you with exposure. And then if you do stop down to F16 or F22, you get some vignetting coming in. Now, there are times when that vignetting can be a really powerful, creative thing, right? But that's only in certain times. Most of the time, we don't want the vignetting. So what do you do? Well, you use an ND filter since you can't adjust the shutter speed yourself. You can do exposure compensation, but when you're outdoors, the camera will only fire as fast as 1 500th of a second. So its physical limitation is 1 500th of a second. You can't gate the light through the shutter any more than that. But it's still extraordinarily powerful. As we can see on my Roll 3 or Cartridge 3 films, and even Cartridge 2 films, when you get to see those videos drop this week, you'll notice it does something other cameras don't do even in the bright daylight without an ND filter, and that is render real bokeh in the daytime. <laughs> That's crazy. Most of the time, you might have a great properly exposed image like with the Mini 90, but everything's in sharp focus throughout the field. And that's okay. There's nothing wrong with that. But how cool is it to be able to take a picture of your kid 
sitting on a fence and actually have the perspective go into focus, come out of focus as it passes your focal point, which would be my son. So you got your foreground blur, you got background blur, and then you got your kiddo. That's something that this camera can do. It's really neat. Guys, I've had a lot of fun with the TL70. I've got this as a review unit. I gotta let you know, you need to watch these first three videos, which will drop down this week, uh, coming Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. First cartridge Wednesday. That's gonna be a knock to the teeth for Mint Camera because, guys, my first cartridge was not a success, but I gained good information that'll help you. The second cartridge was very good, a market improvement. And the third cartridge, I did at nighttime, in the dark, and you will have your minds blown. So, it's all coming. I'm going to do my first 100 images, 10 cartridges worth of film. I'm bringing, you to, uh, bringing to you guys over the next couple of weeks, and I hope that you enjoy it. I'm Robert Hand with Robert Hand Photography. This is an exceptional camera. Get past the learning curve. Understand how the lens works. Pick up that ND filter set, and you will be good to go. I will catch you on the flip side, and I want to thank you for watching.